I'm thrilled to introduce today's presenter, Doug Gopinski. As a strategist at Emstoner, Doug helps institutions create websites, print, social media, and mobile projects. Doug's been with Emstoner for more than seven years and leads our responsive design practice area. He's presented at the UCBA Summit, case conferences, EDUI, Hyde Web, Penn State Web Conference, and on and on. And during today's session, you can tweet Doug at Doug Gopinski. You can tweet me at Mallory Wood. And don't forget to use our hashtag, EmstonerNow. Doug, enough from me. I'm turning my webcam off, and, and this one is all yours. All right. Uh, hello. Welcome. Uh, this session is called Get to the Product, How Colleges and Universities Can Increase Traffic to Degree, Major, and Certificate Pages. If you don't feel like taking notes, the deck is already posted. So Mallory mentioned she would email it, but I actually have the deck posted. Slideshare.com slash the Dougco, T-H-E-D-O-U-G-C-O. Give you just a second to download that or get to the deck if you'd like to follow along with live links. All right, and then Mallory mentioned the hashtag just so that it's visible and you can see it. I'm stoner now. If you want to tweet at me, uh, it's at Doug Gapinski, just my name. Um, I'd love to hear from you. I also follow people back. I'm a very democratic uh, brand. So uh, if you work in higher ed and you follow me, you can expect a follower as well. A right, big idea with this presentation and a few topics that I've been uh, presenting on for the last two years is that colleges and universities sell education. Uh, and that the proxy for the education is the major, minor, degree, or certificate that each student is granted. That's the piece that they earn. That's what they're paying for. Uh, in other words, your academic programs, your majors, minors, degrees, and certificates, those are your products. That's what you're selling. And today we're talking about um, getting traffic to those pages, the web pages that represent individual majors, minors, degrees, and certificates. So if I say program pages in the presentation, that's what I'm talking about, academic programs. I'm not talking about service programs or uh, sustainability programs. If I use the, the words program pages, I'm talking specifically about web pages that are intended to represent majors, minors, degrees, and certificates. Uh, the topics I'll cover today are why this matters, just a couple of studies that have been done to prove that this uh, is super important as marketing content for higher education. I'll talk a little bit about evaluating your program pages. So before you drive traffic to it, you want to understand where the traffic is coming from now. Uh, and then finally, we're going to talk about uh, generating more traffic to program pages both within your site and from outside your site, and then I'll take questions. Um, the, so the first section here is um, why program pages matter. If you haven't seen the Noel Ruffalo, Noel Levitt's e-expectation survey, um, they publish it once a year. Um, just search Ruffalo Noel Levitz. Uh, it's a very easy survey to download. Um, they do a survey each year with 1,000 college-bound seniors that asks, what are your content priorities when visiting a college website? Um, the survey also goes, gets over 500 responses from the parents of these seniors. So here we see that academic program listings and academic program details are some of the top pieces of content that prospective students and prospective parents are interested in. We see that that program listing, the full, the page that represents the full breadth of majors, minors, and degrees, that's really top content for, uh, for prospective students. It's number two for parents after cost, but it's still one of the top priorities on a website. We also see that in, in about the middle of the chart here, we see the academic program details. That is to say an individual program listing for something like computer science or biology. Um, that's critical marketing content as well. So after they, after a student thinks about cost, scholarships, and financial aid, they're thinking about diving into that individual program listing and exploring the degree. What does it mean at this institution versus any others that I'm looking at? Uh, Edgy Ventures published a great survey that um, end of last year. More than 31,000 admitted first-year students, and the survey. Uh, basically examined enrollment drivers in higher education in a number of different institutions across the U.S. Um, and what they found is that the number one enrollment driver in this uh, survey of 31,000 admitted first-year students um, is the strength of programs in a specific area of interest. Um, I think this is a great way to reinforce the importance of these pages and how much of a difference they can make for prospective students. 
Um, finally, I'm going to show you this survey. This is sort of a, a word cloud. I didn't make this. In fact, the guy that uh, did is referenced at the bottom of the slide there, David Pote, really smart guy. You should follow him if you're if you're not following him already. Um, and uh, basically what they did was they did an intercept survey for University of Portsmouth. Um, they got 400 respondents from visitors to their website, and they asked uh, respondents, what, do you, what did you come to the website looking for today? You can see that it's course, and that might be a little confusing, but I invite you to remember that in the UK, in, in Europe, uh, course means major. Basically, course means degree. It's a, it's a slightly different terminology. And you can see that overwhelmingly, uh, visitors came to the website to look for individual majors, to look for a degree. Uh, so if we're talking about increasing traffic to individual program pages, the first thing to do is evaluate where you are now because you want to get a sense of how effective your efforts to increase traffic will be. Um, I think that, that the prelude to this is you need to make sure that you actually have marketing content on these pages to begin with. And if you don't, maybe start with five or ten popular degrees. Um, here's an example of an institution that doesn't do a great job, and I apologize in advance if anyone from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign is watching the webinar, um, but this is an example of how not to do major uh, listing pages, and the reason is there's no content on this page for a prospective student or parent. It's strictly a catalog listing for current students. Um, so if I were a prospective student thinking about computer science and wanting to major in it, I get to this page and it's a bit of a door slam. I can see a course listing of requirements, um, but that would be like a number four or number five priority for me as a prospective student. I would want to see what the degree is about, um, you know, who I'm going to study from, what sort of a career I can pursue, where graduate students go. All of that stuff is, uh, is high priority content for a degree listing. So um, before you even think about driving traffic to these pages, the first thing to ask yourself is, are my pages more than a registrar's catalog listing? And if not, you want to create content for at least five majors so that you um, basically have successful content to point people to. Um, another way to think about this is it's tough to measure, especially let's say you're at a national institution. You've got 280 programs at some uh, large public national institutions. Um, measuring the traffic for 280 programs is too much work. Pick the top five most enrolled degrees as a baseline. That's an easier uh, assignment to get your head around and that's an easier thing to kind of start reporting on. So choose your top five most enrolled. If you don't have a good relationship with uh, academic affairs or with the uh, um, director of institutional research, a quick way to figure out what your most popular majors are, just go to US News and World Report. It's right there on the front page of your university or your college's listing. Um, this is a piece of data that they added a few years ago. Five most popular majors for any institution. It's public data. You can see what your top most enrolled majors are, and those are the pages you want to start measuring. Um, you want to dig into analytics. This is what most people use. If you happen to use another platform, it's fine too. It's just many people uh, are on Google Analytics because it's free. Um, three things to set up on degree pages. Set up internal versus external filters if you're not doing this already. The reason why you want to do this is you want to understand how much traffic is coming to your degree pages from on-campus computers versus prospective students who are viewing from off-campus. Uh, second thing you want to do is take a look at uh, measuring page views versus unique page views because this tells you how many people who are visiting degree pages um, are new visitors versus returning visitors, somebody who might be coming back to say, I think I really am interested in this. And finally, you want to look at your bounce rates to help you figure out what's going on with the page. Um, bounce rates, in, in a way, are a way of looking at uh, whether or not traffic is coming to a page intentionally. If you have a very high bounce rate, it might tell you that you're doing good things with SEO, but that you're bringing in a lot of visitors who aren't really interested in an individual degree. So bounce rate is a way of helping you understand, uh, are people coming into a specific degree intentionally? Um, another great piece to look at on an individual degree page is the navigation summary. This is a button right near the top if you're in Google Analytics. Um, and pushing navigation summary shows you referring pages and where they went uh, where visitors went after a specific degree page. This is a, a degree listing page for accounting from a current client. And um, if you haven't seen the navigation summary before, I'll just give you a brief explanation. The column on the left shows you referring pages. This is where visitors came from to get to that accounting degree page. 
And on the right, you've got the next page in the sequence, where they went from the degree page. Really important to understand where people are coming from and what action they're taking after they visit the degree. In this case, we can see that the topmost referring page, about 51% of the traffic is coming from um, this institution's degree and certificate landing page. So they have one of those landing pages that collects all the degrees, and I can see that page is very successful at driving traffic to the accounting degree. So that's a good thing to note because that's what we want that page to do. Uh, we can also see that the most relevant actions that somebody is taking once they've landed on the accounting degree is that they're looking at the options. So they're saying, in this case, the content under options is, can I take the course online? Uh, which locations is it offered at? This is a community college with multiple satellites. So we know that um, some, one of the most interesting piece of, pieces of content for prospective students are what are my options for completing the degree. Uh, and we can also see that about 20% of the traffic is actually going back to that degree and certificate landing page. That's an important one to note because that tells us that somebody who's considering an education at this institution is probably shopping multiple degrees. So that's a good piece of intelligence to note. About 20% of people came to the accounting page and then they said, eh, maybe, but I'm going to go back to that full listing and I'm going to look at some more degrees and understand, you know, is accounting really the right choice for me or do I maybe want business administration? Do I want something a little different? Uh, another great way to visualize where visitors go after arriving a specific, uh, at a specific degree page is in-page analytics. So this is just a little snippet of the page, the accounting page I'm talking about, where you can actually visualize uh, some of those traffic stats I showed you. Nice way to, to demonstrate to leadership at your institution instead of just hitting them up with charts or the, the Google Analytics view. This is not super user friendly. Um, if, you're, if you're accustomed to Google Analytics, you're probably uh, excited by this, but most people have an easier time of looking at that and go and going, oh, 39% of your conversions are going to program options to explore that. That's relevant and it's easy to visualize. So in-page analytics or the navigation summary, two great tools for understanding how people come in and where they go from a degree page. All right, well, that's the assessment piece. And, and as I mentioned, I think if you're not doing any assessment, it's great to start with your top five most enrolled programs um, because those are the programs that your institution has an easy time selling. Um, doesn't have to be the top five most enrolled. You could do top three. You could do two of the newest programs. Um, you could do two undergraduate and two graduates. Um, those are some different ideas for how you might break down a, a, a little initial assessment of traffic to degree pages. But let's talk about getting the traffic there. The first big idea that I've got some techniques grouped under is make sure your degree pages are super easy to reach from anywhere within your site. After we talk about these techniques, I'm going to talk about how to get people to your degree pages from outside the site. Um, but the first one is, uh, is a super obvious one. Obvious always wins. It's make degrees or programs a persistent link on your site. Uh, I'm going to show you this site. This is Capital University. This is actually an mStoner project, and I'm just bringing that up because not everything I'm showing today is an mStoner example. If I don't bring up that uh, mStoner did it, you can consider that it's uh, just a site that we found. We want to highlight the best thinking out there, uh, and that means we're not just promoting our own work. That having been said, this first example is an mStoner project, and I want to make that clear. Um, so Capital University recently relaunched a responsive site for them. And programs is a persistent link on the site and that left rail. Any page in the site you go to, you can get to a full listing of academic programs. And we did this for all the reasons that I mentioned and talking about why programs are important. Uh, it's a one button push right there in the left. Um, and it gets me to a full listing of programs. That's two clicks from anywhere on the site. I can get to an individual degree. Um, it's just a beautiful way to increase traffic to these individual degree pages. I um, want to point out how this works in mobile, too, because um, we had to think about how to make this easy and nice for mobile visitors as well. A lot, of, a lot of young people now are primarily mobile users. That's their primary tool for getting to the Internet and investigating things. So it's really important to think about how a mobile visitor gets to your degree listing as well. So somebody pushes the, this is a mobile view, somebody pushes the menu button. It shutters up into this, and we've got a little icon to call out that there's a, a, a link for exploring programs and degrees. And that basically opens this uh, another piece of uh, UI that gets somebody to the majors listing. So just really simple. Actually requires uh, one more click, but the main reason for that is that we have to be intentional about how much UI we hit a mobile visitor with. We're trying to 
make it an elegant experience. We're trying to make it highly usable. Um, so it's still really intuitive, just requires one more push of the thumb. Um, here's another great way to get traffic to, um, to a degree listing and to individual degrees from any page in your site. This is an example of Spring Arbor University, a small uh, university in uh, Michigan. They've got a programs and majors link right in the primary navigation. First thing I wanted to flag about this is um, the degree language here is way more obvious than academics. Many institutions have a link, uh, their first link is academics. I really like that it says programs and majors because that doesn't uh, require a prospective student to go, where can I go to find a major listing? It just says programs and majors, really easy to understand. Second thing they do really well is once I've pushed that button, I get a mega menu that gives me different categories of degrees right away. So I push programs and majors and I can see a, a link for undergraduate, adult studies, graduate education, online, military options for, um, for military uh, satellites, and then finally um, a, a course catalog listing. It's just a really elegant way to get people to specific degree listing pages from anywhere in the site. Uh, and finally, they've got a little bit of strategic redundancy. As I, as I read any page on the site and I get to the bottom of it, they've got a little area that says, um, what can you study at SAU? And that gets them to that, those listing pages. So I've got it in the top of the page under programs and majors. If I'm not looking for it or if I'm coming to the site from a different page, I've got another chance to get to a degree listing once I hit that footer. So it's a, it's a, it is a little bit redundant, but it's a nice way to reinforce that um, this is very easy content to reach and we want you to explore degrees. We want you to get to these pages. Um, here's another way to get more traffic to degree pages from inside your site. Uh, search auto-completion that focuses on individual majors and degrees. Um, so this site is uh, bucknell.edu and they have a beautiful uh, auto-complete uh, snippet installed here. Let me show you how it works. So you go to bucknell.edu, you're, you're not sure quite how to get to an individual major. You start typing something in the search box up there. So let's say I was interested in computer science. Even as I'm typing, I've only completed COMP. Um, right below that, I'm getting returns for any major and minor that has COMP listed in it. Um, and you can see that the, the search uh, window that shutters open is segmented by searching the whole site, searching for individual people, searching for majors and minors, searching for individual offices, and then finally any other pages it returns. And I think this is a, a beautiful example of how um, of elegant search on a site. Many uh, colleges and universities don't have uh, search that works nearly as, as well. And I like how much focus it puts on individual degree listings because ultimately that's what we want to get people to. We want people to look at the product and we want them to say, and I'm interested in, in a comparative humanities program or I'm interested in computer science um, and I can explore what the product is on this, on this individual degree page. Uh, another great way to get people to individual degree listings is make sure your listing page, the page that collects all of your degrees, is highly usable. I'll show you three models for this that I really like. Um, the first is Simmons College uh, in Massachusetts, and they're using what I call a card pattern with filters. And what I mean by that is you go to their undergraduate program listing page, the page that gathers all possible majors for an undergraduate, and you've got these little cards with visualizations below. The visualizations at a glance help me understand what the major is all about. Um, and uh, it's just very simple. You know, it looks a little bit like Google+. Plus. It's, it's very easy to look at. There's filters along the top of the page that allow me to filter, you know, specifically if I'm looking for something undergraduate, graduate, if I just want to get a certificate, or if I want to get an accelerated degree. And they also have buttons, you'll notice below the little um, uh, input field there, they've got buttons to filter by alphabet. So if I happen to know that I was looking for biology, I could just quickly push that A through E button and get only the majors that are listed uh, from A to E. Second model in use uh, by Boston University, so this is their degree program listing page, that page that represents all of the degree programs that they offer, um, is, is basically just a really nice alphabetical listing. So they've got the A, B, C that you can kind of look at and scan. They also have filters, just like the Simmons example. In this case, I can choose show all. I can choose only undergraduate majors, only undergraduate minors, masters, and doctorate programs. 
So I've got a, a sequence of buttons that I can push to quickly understand what the offerings are for me as a student. Um, finally, this is one that I really love. It's the University of Chicago. And uh, it's a different design pattern. It's got a tabbed list along the top with a legend for minors, interdisciplinary studies, and joint degrees. So you think about where education is going. You think about the academic offerings that um, colleges and universities are adding now. There's a big push for inter interdisciplinary studies at many institutions. Their listing page allows me to quickly parse um, in, in your undergraduate listing, which of these are offered as a major, which are offered as a minor, um, which ones are offered as interdisciplinary studies if I want to do that, and which uh, I can do as a joint degree if I'm interested in that. So there's, there's a, a lot of information here for an undergraduate to be able to go, um, I'd really like to do bio, biological sciences, I'd really like to be able to do it as a minor. Um, finally, another way to, to uh, get traffic to pages is from within the site is provide links to related degrees. This is a really easy one that very few institutions do, and I'll just show you a concrete example of it. This is um, an academic, this is a, I just took that specific part of the page from northpark.edu. The um, reason why you want to link to related degrees is that up to 70% of students in the U.S. will change majors at least once. That tells us that the shopper for a degree, at least an undergraduate, is very uncertain about their choice. Um, so you bring them to a degree page, in this case for chemistry, um, and you're giving them options to get to other degrees that maybe are also appealing to them. You want them to stay within your site. You don't want them to jump off to another um, a university or college's chemistry page right, to, right away. So at the, bottom, you know, at the bottom of their page, there's basically room for you might also be interested in minor in chemistry, biology, pre-med, or pre-farm. Uh, and this is a great way to kind of keep uh, keep the interest of a visitor, uh, point them to other degree pages, and make sure that they've got content uh, to get to, and respect the, the fact that they are an uncertain shopper. They're thinking about multiple degrees most likely as an undergraduate. Um, here's a really easy one that, that, um, that I think people also mess up in higher ed, and that's use consistent nomenclature within your site. Um, if you dig through the 5,000 plus pages that represent most higher ed sites, you see that Academic offerings are not referred to consistently. So um, sometimes they're called majors, sometimes they're called degrees, sometimes they're called programs. Uh, in Europe, I mentioned that uh, undergraduate majors are called courses. Um, graduate degrees are often referred to as degrees or programs or by the individual degree. And finally, continuing ed um, within higher ed often gets the reference certificates or non-credit courses. So I, what I'm asking higher ed to do is um, make a rule for yourself. Make a, make a rule for your own site. Uh, try to get that rule out there to the academic departments and say, look, we only call undergraduate majors majors. We don't call them programs. We don't call them degrees. And the reason for this is that, um, like I said, many, many people are shopping more than one degree. We want them to get a consistent sense for what the offering actually is, and you don't get that by, by uh, using a variety of different words to describe the offering. Um, let's talk about getting traffic to degree pages from outside of the site. So those were all techniques designed to uh, up the amount of traffic that you're getting to individual degree pages from uh, within your own site uh, or within subsites. Here are some ways to promote um, degree traffic, traffic to degree pages from outside. Um, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your pages are buttoned up for SEO. Seems like a really basic one. But it's very rare to find an institution that does this well for every single degree offering across the site. And one of the reasons for that is that um, there's, there's often multiple editors uh, touching the degree pages. It's people from different departments, different deans maintaining these pages. So part of making sure that um, all of your degree pages are on even footing is creating a set of standards for uh, people to respect and, and say, look, we really want to have every degree page in the site have these five things um, in order. So S SEO influencers, these are things that are going to make a difference either for web crawlers or for human visitors as they look at your site. Uh, first thing is you want really well-written copy that's relevant to the degree. Uh, the reason for this is um, unless you're a, a genius, you're probably not smarter than Google, and they're constantly changing their algorithms to make sure that SEO can't be gamed. They want a well-written copy that's relevant to a topic to receive the top entry. So you want to make sure that uh, on a degree page, when I get there, there's relevant marketing content. Number two is you want to make sure your title tags are consistent across the board. You also want to make sure that the meta descriptions are across the board. And 
just as a refresher, if you're not uh, familiar or you're not familiar with the meta description, that's the piece of copy that comes up when somebody performs a, a search in Google. They see it right below the page title. It's a little description of what's in the page. Um, you want to create a consistent model for meta descriptions and give give content editors a sense of how those should be written. Um, you want to do relevant headlines and subheads. This is actually more of a human element, um, so that if somebody comes into a degree page cold. They can quickly scan the page and say, this content is for me um, versus it's not for me. Alt tags, you've got to make sure that your alt tags are buttoned up. Um, if it's not, you're not meeting accessibility standards, and that's a no-no for most colleges and universities. Um, it also helps your SEO relevance to make sure you have uh, alt tags in place for all images. Uh, and then finally, um, this is a piece that uh, higher ed, I think, can explore more. Link to a page. Or, or a specific degree page from social media. Start promoting degrees in social media because social media posts actually help the search engine relevance of individual pages. So um, you pick maybe the top five most enrolled degrees at your institution. Let's say it's something like journalism, business administration, um, and English. Start periodically posting a link to a degree page from social media and you're going to see that that gives you a boost in traffic because um, it's, it makes um, makes Google say, oh, people are linking to it. It must be relevant. It must be good. Uh, people seem to like it. They're linking to it. So I'm going to push that one up in a search return. Um, this is one that I think very, very few institutions do well. So I'll just say it again. Post to degree pages from social media. Uh, another way to get traffic to individual degree pages is the use of semantic URLs. So you're probably familiar with what those are. Um, but you could think about this as being easy to reach URLs in print, in advertising, and in email. Let me give you a really obvious example of this. Um, this is a, a picture from in Seattle, where, I, where I'm based out of. It's a picture of a billboard for an MBA degree from uh, Foster, which is the UW's uh, business school. And what this does is it drives people to a specific degree page for MBAs. Um, this does really well as an example of promoting an individual degree from, uh, from you know, in an ad. The thing that it doesn't do so well is that URL is kind of complicated. And if I'm on the road, I'm driving, that may not be super easy to remember. I've got to remember foster.washington.edu slash fostermba. So if you're going to use a semantic URL, you might want to do something more like this. Um, this is Texas Wesleyan, and it's just txwest.edu slash mba. So it doesn't have that redundancy that we see in the previous example, where I see Foster twice. I don't know what that's about, but I don't need to see Foster twice to understand that it's Foster School of Business. Um, and, and to me, this would be much easier if it were just washington.edu slash MBA. So always try to think about the context. Try to make semantic URLs really short, because you're more likely to get conversions from a semantic URL if it's very short and easy to remember. Um, if we're thinking about how you might use semantic URLs to point people to content, degree content, you could point people to individual degree listing pages. So uh, fabricollege.edu slash degrees. This would get somebody to that listing page. You could uh, promote only majors and minors. If you're a national institution that has a landing page for majors and minor, minors versus graduate listings, you could do fabricollege.edu slash majors. And that would say, anything that we send out that um, is for undergraduates, we're going to just point them straight to the listing of majors. We don't need to show them the graduate listing. Um, you could promote individual degrees. So you could do uh, fabricollege.edu slash economics. So you got specific mailing pieces or you have specific programs you want to promote. Very easy to do that with semantic URLs. Uh, and then finally, um, if, you were, if you were launching a specific marketing campaign, you could set up custom URLs. So let's say uh, Faber College. Um, had a campaign that was called Get Educated. Um, they could use that, and they could use that, that um, custom URL to drive traffic and to test the success of certain print pieces that use only that URL. So that'd be another way to handle it. Um, but the basic idea here is use semantic URLs uh, to, drive, to drive traffic to your degree pages. I'll also talk a little bit about pay-per-click campaigns to promote individual degrees. So this is, a, this is also an area that I think a lot of ins institutions are interested in right now is uh, pay-per-click campaigns and how successful they are. Um, if, you're, if PPC isn't ringing a bell for you, I just wanted to show you what it is. So this is a Google search that I did yesterday for MBA Seattle. If I were interested in an MBA, what, what might Google decide to show me as someone who lives in Seattle? And the PPC campaigns that are visible from the return 
are everything that has that little yellow ad tag next to it. The people on the left are people that paid for a high priority, uh, and the, the people on the right are people who did not. So um, what we see here in the left is, you know, basically I get entries that look almost like Google entries. They're on top of the page or they're in the sidebar. It's really, uh, it's, it's really a little bit uh, tricky because if I weren't paying attention closely, I might click one of those thinking that that's actually the best return that Google offers me. I might not see that it's an ad. Um, so a few things to, to think about as you dive into a PPC campaign. This is a conser these are conservative recommendations because I think a lot of institutions are still dipping their feet in with PPC and, and don't want to plug um, $20,000 into it right off the bat. Um, the first thing is use Google. You can use a free tool called Google AdWords to assess the volume of local and national searches for specific degrees. This is totally free. You could get started today. You just uh, log into Google AdWords and you uh, and you get started. You can perform search terms. It shows you high volume search returns. You can filter by zip code, specific urban areas. It's beautiful. Uh, and this is a way for you to understand which terms are getting searched the most. So you could do a search for something like MBA. You could do a search for something like English major. Um, and it's basically going to spit out a bunch of data that, that shows you how often people search for specific degrees. Um, test a degree-based PPC campaign in specific geographic markets first. And why I'm recommending this is you want to keep PPC affordable, affordable versus buying in every national market. Um, we work with a lot of institutions that hit about 15 different urban markets very hard. And for you to purchase um, ads in all those markets probably isn't going to be super affordable. What I'd say is try PPC in the markets that you have the easiest time converting in and uh, test the waters and just see if it's working for you. Um, also consider the PPC campaigns for high enrollment degrees first. So that you want to promote the academic programs that your institution has an easier time of selling because I think that's where you're going to see the biggest yield with a specific PPC campaign. If your institution is known for economics, it's going to be easier for you to convince people to come to, uh, to come there for economics. That's the basic idea. Um, also want to just flag this about uh, pay-per-click copywriting. Not all uh, PPC ads are, are equal. Um, it's very cheap, it's very affordable to run multiple ad variants to see what visitors respond to. So this is a recommendation you want to follow every time is just test out a few ad variants to see which ones are getting the most clicks. Um, you want to test maybe a couple of broad terms such as MBA versus more specific terms. So a variant that you might try there is part-time MBA or executive MBA in Seattle. Um, what, I've, what I've heard from clients is that generally the second category, the more niche terms, tend to get more traffic. Uh, tend to get more traffic, but we're talking about testing multiple variants, and this is a way for you to try it out on your own. And, you, know, uh, you can test it, you can try it, you can see what works for you. And then finally, um, PPC ads uh, resemble Google returns. They don't look like a traditional ad, and I'm just going to back up again to show you that. They look like Google returns. So the idea here is actually to make this look like a really useful Google entry. You don't actually want this to look like an ad. You want this to look like a search return. And I'll show you what I mean about about how to think about good copywriting in this area versus bad copywriting. So we can see at this WFCU entry on the left here, it says, let's see, best online graduate MBA programs graduate in 22 months GMAT waiver. I got two pieces in, cop in the copy there that matter to me as a prospective student. One is I can graduate in 22 months. That's great. The second is a GMAT waiver. I don't want to take the GMAT. So um, right up there in the, in the ad, I can see two things that are decision factors for me. Um, if you follow the examples in the right column, there's some good copywriting there. Uh, the City U, I don't actually know what City U is, but I can see accredited, nonprofit, online or campus, day or night, apply now. The part that matters to me as a, a prospective MBA student is online or campus, day or night. Uh, I can get I get right away from the ad that there's flexibility in the program. And another one that I think is good copywriting is one that says MBA classes start soon. So this is one of the only ones that sticks out in the lot of uh, paid ads. Um, it creates a sense of urgency for me right away. MBA classes start soon. All right. Well, uh, Capella, I've heard of them. It's I've heard it's big online. I better investigate when this starts because I'd like to know uh, if I need to get enrolled. Um, so I think those three examples are good ones. I want to show you the ones that I think are bad as well. 
So here's one for uh, Antioch, Seattle, that says Masters in Business, Seattle. Um, Earn your Masters of Science in Management and Leadership, get info. That doesn't really tell me anything at all that I would want to know. It doesn't tell me those things that I identified on the previous slide. It doesn't tell me how long the program takes. It doesn't tell me if there's flexibility. Um, I know that I'm looking for a master's degree, and your copy just doesn't communicate anything. Uh, and another that I think is not so great is uh, Rice. They do have the night and weekend courses. That's a little better. But they've wasted um, one, two, three, four, five, six. They've wasted seven words here. Start earning your Rice MBA today. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, that's not a decision factor for me. Uh, apply now. Well, I assume I would apply now if I actually wanted to get into the program, but I'm just investigating right now. Um, you can't really afford to waste copy in this space. You have about 15 words to use, so you have to be very careful and you have to be very intentional about how you write these. Well, that is the uh, slide set um, for today, and we'll spend the balance of time answering questions. So thanks for uh, listening, and I look forward to hearing what questions you guys might have for me. Hey, Doug. That was awesome. That like the last 40 minutes have just flown by with all the really awesome information that you've shared. I can't believe that we're already uh, here. <laughs> I'm turning my webcam back on, and I do have some really great questions uh, from people. If you would like to still get your question in, please do use the question feature or uh, tweet us. Um, but let's get started. Let me pull up the question list here. So. Uh, one of the first questions that came through, how important is it to have a PDF of the degree requirements available on your website? Do people actually use PDFs like this, and do you have any data that, that showcases that? Um, I don't think having a PDF of degree, was it degree requirements? What was the, what was the yes, exact degree order? requirements, yeah. So I think um, it's a good idea to have requirements listed. I'm actually going to back up to an individual slide. Um, it's not good for that to be the focal point of the page. Um, you do want requirements to be listed somewhere on the degree because you want people to understand if they qualify for it or what they need to do to complete it. Um, but it just shouldn't be a focal point of the page. And um, you know, linking to it as a PDF is just fine. Um, I think what you're going to find if you do provide a PDF is that current students, some current students like it, and some current students will download it, and some current students may prefer to actually have a printed list. Um, but you want to avoid making the requirements um, the main focus of the page for the reason that I mentioned for this uh, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign example. Um, there's just no marketing content here. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. not good. Uh, this, this is not a good page for a prospective student to reach. Um, they can get the requirements. They can see that 120 hours are required. They can get a basic course listing. But that should be more like the third or fourth course in a meal for them. They should be able to see mm -hmm. relevant uh, careers. They should be able to see who they'll study with. They should be able to see opportunities beyond the classroom, whether that's uh, internships, co-ops. They should be able to see where uh, graduate students go or work. Um, and then the requirements can be, um, like I said, maybe the fourth course in that meal. Thanks, Doug. Um, there's been a bit of conversation on Twitter about how, you know, of course, higher ed is siloed, and that, um, you know, putting several degree landing pages in various places, uh, you know, you might be building out multiple pages. So um, our friend Donna Lehman is asking, what do you do if you have several potential degree landing pages, one in admissions, one in the department, one in the catalog listing? You know, what's, what's your best suggestion for dealing with that situation? Um, you know, it's funny, too, because I've actually seen a few of those on the Fordham site. We, we did work with uh, Donna on the Fordham.edu site. Um, my, my, my thing is I would put the most emphasis on an institution focusing on the central landing page. So that's the, if you look at this, uh, Il the Illinois example that I've got up on screen right now, it's that undergraduate programs link right in the top. It's not the five or six pages that uh, colleges or schools might have for individual landing pages because Ultimately, the content editors are going to have the final say, usually going to have the final say on what goes in their site. If you work for a central office, you do have control over what the central program listing page looks like. Um, and so I would focus on making that page as good as you possibly can. 
Um, I think that there's probably a little bit more nuance in, in the answer than that. Um, but I guess that's my, those are my initial thoughts. Sure. Donna, does Another that question. work? <laughs> yeah, Donna, treat us. Let us know if that works. Donna also asked another question. Let me get back to it. She's wondering what the tech and software that drives the search auto-completion might be. Yeah, there's a number of different um, ways to implement that. Um, and for the most part, you got to do custom code. So um, there's some Drupal modules for anybody that out, might be out there on Drupal. There's some WordPress modules if you happen to be using WordPress. I don't happen to know the listing uh, for those right away. Uh, I think for many of the big CMSs, this is going to be a custom uh, piece of code. So if you're thinking of, let's say you're on uh, Hannah Hill's Cascade server uh, uh, on the updates OU campus, um, you know those those engines don't do that auto completion by default. So we'd be talking mm -hmm. about um, either working with them to do custom code or working with a third party to do custom code that would marry up nicely with the, the engine itself. So I'm, yeah, unfortunately, it's not an out of the box thing for many CMSs. Mm. It is something that's got to be uh, added on. Added on. Okay. Talk about PPC for a second. Um, do you recommend driving PPC traffic to standard degree program pages or to custom landing pages? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I think that's going to vary by the marketing campaign. So if you had a marketing campaign for a specific college, I think you would want to do a landing page because in that case you'd be saying, um, like, uh, let me give you an example that I can think of. Let's say Purdue wanted to promote engineering. Well, Purdue offers, I think, about 30 different engineering degrees. Many undergraduates are probably thinking about three or four different engineering options. So for them, in that case, um, it might make a little bit more sense to, to do a, like a landing page that collects um, the top five engineering degrees and, and points people to that routing page where they can then get to the ind individual degrees. Um, in, in the case of like an MBA program, and I'll skip ahead for that example, so that a graduate program for an MBA, um, for graduate schools, um, like an, an MBA is the bread and butter, right? Or a law school, uh, they want about 80% of it or 90% of the enrollment to be the JD. So it doesn't really make sense for them to point people to a bunch of options. They're just promoting a specific degree. Um, I think the another thing to think about is um, those top five degrees. I think I couldn't say that enough. It's easiest to sell your top most enrolled degrees. So if you were thinking about individual campaigns, that might be a way to crack the nut is say, we know we get a lot of students for like Kenyan. We know we, we know we get a lot of students for English and literature. That should be the PPC campaign right there because um, mm -hmm. it's not tough to convince somebody to come to Kenyan for for English. Um, so that I guess that's my thought is I think it kind of depends on what the marketing campaign is, whether or not you would want to do a custom landing page that collects a few degrees or um, or promote an individual degree. Mm -hmm. Um, off the top of your head, do you have any suggestions for colleges or universities um, that are doing a great job with their search marketing? Um, you know, um, I know Loyola University Chicago does a lot. Um, I think I'd be hard pressed to pull up an example that would show you um, how well it works because so much of a search return is local. Um, so, you know, if, if I do a search right now, in, in fact, in Seattle for something like MBA, it's looking at my geographic location and it's using that to drive a lot of the returns. So I think, um, off the top of my head, I don't, I can't think of a good example that I'd be able to get to and show, but I do know mm -hmm. that, um, I, I do know that Loyola University Chicago puts a lot of money into that specific piece. Okay. Any chance you have or are aware of research that shows um, whether one term is more effective than other when it comes another when it comes to marketing this like majors versus degrees or programs or is it really institutional like specific with their nomenclature? Yeah, that's a tricky question um, because I think part of the answer to that is. Um, is related to how much material other material references. Um, a degree in a specific way. I'm not being coy with that. Let me let me get to this page and I'll talk about it. 
Um, I, I guess first to answer the question simply, I haven't seen any research that says one term is easier to understand than another. Um, um, what I have seen is that institutions typically favor one term over another and that term filters into a number of different pieces. It's in the academic catalog, it's in the, all the calendar references, it's in use by some of the schools. Um, and so when you think about changing one term, it, the, the question is um, how much of the other material would we make inconsistent by, by shifting it if it's a radical shift? Um, mm -hmm. What I'd say from having done a lot of usability tests with undergraduates is that majors as a term seems to be pretty well understood. Um, but I think, again, that's probably going to vary a little bit by uh, institution. We're working with an institution right now where the average age of an enrolling student is 31. Um, and, and so for them, I think degrees is the word that, uh, that works. So that was a long-winded way of saying that I don't know. <laughs> um, but I, but I think the thing to think about there is um, if you're changing nomenclature, how many different pieces does that impact and who do you need to talk to about rolling out a, a change that makes things more consistent? I think it probably makes sense for institutions to do a little of their own research on this with their audiences, right? I mean, if you have the means to do it, um, it could be part of, a, part of a research study. I agree, Mallory. I should have said that first. Just help I me out. The first. <laughs> I yeah. got you back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Can you actually answer the other questions? That no, that's good advice. Do, do a little sure, bit of sure. All right, so this do a little bit of testing. Know, it goes a long way. <laughs> All right. So, um, do you have any examples of uh, degree or major pages with really great marketing content on them? Yeah. Um, a couple that come to mind. Um, you should check out Oxford in the UK. Um, they're they're really really good. Um, you should check out North Park. I just have a snippet in there. That's northpark.edu. Go into an undergraduate undergraduate studies and go into an individual major. Um, Savannah College of Art and Design has amazing degree pages. Um, just to reference a point of of uh, conversation earlier, uh, Fordham does a really good job with it. Um, they're doing a good job with individual degree pages. So those are a few that come to mind. What are your thoughts on using catalog copy as the marketing copy on individual degree program pages? Um, I mean, I guess, so let me back up to the Illinois thing as an example. If your catalog has marketing content in it, it's not a bad idea. But typically, um, when a catalog entry is being picked up, it looks like this. So if your catalog happens to have really good marketing content, by all means, use it. Make sure that you're not intending your marketing content to look like this. Okay. Let's see, we have so many questions. This is great. I'm just trying to put them in an order that makes sense. Um, all right, so Anne is wondering, she's saying, please tell me more about what kind of content is best for academic pages. You know, so you mentioned opportunities, internships, grad schools. She just wants you to expand on that a bit more. Yeah. Um, so, you know, what, what I would typically say is there should be, I'm going to talk about undergraduate first because I think that when we get to graduate, we're, we're talking, we're getting very specific into programmatic stuff. It's easier to answer for an undergraduate. So think about a 17-year-old. Um, one of their questions is going to be, um, what does the degree do for the world? You know, what, why does computer science matter? Um, so I think having some intro copy that speaks to that is good. I think copy that speaks to careers is very good. What, where can you work? You know, what kind of jobs can you get with a computer science degree? Um, where, do bachelor, where do people with a BS degree from Illinois, where do they go to work afterwards? Where do they go to grad school afterwards? Because as a 17-year-old, I might be thinking of uh, one or more of those things. Um, internship placements is always good. Um, many students want to know um, where they'd be able to get an internship, even if they decide not to do an internship. Um, if you have any program-specific uh, honor societies, that's great content for high-ability students. Um, just have a little blurb about that. 
Um, if you have any sort of study abroad program or anything, um, any intensives, alternative breaks, that sort of thing built in, that's great, a great place to include that content. Um, and then, like I said, it's not a bad idea to have some of the functional requirements there or to have a course listing there. That's just not the main event. You know, that's more like, all right, I get the broad view for what the degree is, what the degree could mean to my life. Now I can dive into individual courses and see that in the first year I'd be studying um, discrete structures, data structures, computer architecture. Um, so it's basically, um, we want the page to function more like the journalistic pyramid. Go from broad interest to very narrow interest at the bottom. And does that change? Uh, so Rachel's asking, you know, what's the difference between marketing the specific major versus a school or division, say, you know, school of education or social sciences? And so, so do any of those recommendations change when, when you are marketing the school or division? Yeah, um, I think I understand the question. Rachel will have to chime in if I'm not answering this differently. Um, I think she's asking about a centralized listing for um, degrees versus how the listing might look within a college or school. So Rachel, fix fix me if uh, if I'm not answering it correctly. But that's the the thing I'm trying to answer. Um, I think that the key to this is some institutions centralize major and minor pages. Some of them have them listed under the college and school, and some of them have both. Um, I can't tell you necessarily in, in this webinar what's the best model for your institution. What I can tell you is that centralizing your degrees under, uh, under an admissions area or under an academics area gives you a little bit more control over the content that goes in those pages. Um, if you're just um, using a listing page to siphon people off to individual colleges and schools, you're sort of at the mer mercy of what the a dean wants to look the program listing to look like. Um, so I think, I think the, the key there is um, if you have the resources to manage it centrally, um, it's, it's probably a, a great model. Uh, we've worked with some clients where they have one or two people working on the website, and, and with a team like that, you're not going to be able to get to a high level of maintenance for 100 different degrees. Um, so um, if we're talking about degrees that more naturally belong under a college, and an example of that would be an MBA, um, the, reason, the reason why graduate degrees are often under a college is that uh, most graduate students will only apply to one type of degree. So for a graduate student, they actually don't really need the full uh, listing of undergraduate majors. They don't need to, they don't need to cross check different degree types. They're usually in, interested only in the college or school because they're only looking at that one degree or they're looking at a variant of it. If I'm an MBA, I might be looking at part-time MBA, I might be looking at exec MBA, but MBA is pretty much it. So I don't need to know about student life at the institution. I don't need to know about um, uh, f faculty outside of my area. What would matter to me as a prospective MBA is all going to be inside that individual business school site. Um, so I, I think um, I, I tried to kind of hit a number of topics there. Rachel, was that what you were looking for? Well, if she messages me, we'll definitely find out. And I think that you actually may have wound up answering another question. How do degree pages differ for undergraduate versus graduate programs? Do you have anything else to say on that topic? No, and I'll just, let me just do it real nice and neat just because I was kind of rambling with that last response. Um, we know that undergraduates, up to 70% of them change majors. So it makes sense for those undergraduate major pages to be centralized somewhere so that somebody can get to different listings um, with ease. You know, they might be, for, for example, for me, I was looking at computer science and arts. Those were two different areas at Indiana University where I graduated from. It would have been helpful to me if I could have easily gotten from one program listing to the other. Um, mm -hmm. But the web was still kind of in its infancy when I went to college. I'm showing my age. Um, and I think, for again, for a graduate student, you really want to focus on only the college because that's the most relevant information to a grad student. They're not they're likely not looking at an MBA and a nursing program, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking at a nursing degree, I want to make sure that I can see nursing faculty, um, nursing externships, uh, nursing service opportunities, nursing rankings. I don't need to see the institutional rankings at large. I just need that information that's available in the college. Cool. Thank you. That was a great response. Um, 
another along the same line of conversation and questioning, Meg's wondering if you find that you know do you find that a lot of copy on that main landing page for a de degree description will increase the bounce rate? You know, she of course is trying to figure out what the right balance is. Yeah, um, you know I think it sort of depends on what a lot of copy qualifies as. I think that a paragraph of intro copy probably does the trick where you're introducing what the degree means in society, or maybe it's all about differentiators at your institution. So um, why you would want to study, um, um, let's say, um, filmmaking at um, FIT in New York City. Um, you have about a paragraph to, to pull in some relevant search terms um, that you might pull out of Google AdWords. Um, I think I think that's probably a pretty good rule of thumb. And then you should get into list-based content, which would be those things like careers in filmmaking, um, where graduates work, um, where graduates um, uh, have done have gone to grad, you know, where undergrads have gone to grad school, that sort of thing. Karen is wondering, you know, simply who owns these pages at most institutions? Yeah. Um, I kind of covered that earlier, but I'll let me let me do it again because it's it's a fascinating topic. So there's there's basically three models out there. One is totally centralized degrees. An example of this would be a place like UC Davis, if you want to check them out. They've got mm -hmm. all the undergraduate majors and minors collected in one area under academics. Um, it's clear, or it seems to be pretty clear, that marketing owns it, even if um, they're working with the deans to generate content because. If I were sitting down to write a computer science degree page, I would have to work with the dean. I would have to work with people driving the curriculum to be able to get content into it. Um, but I would want to own the page, you know, as a marketing person. I would want to be able to say, hey, I'm looking for your input and I'm looking for some lists to be filled out here. But this is a marketing piece. You, you, as a dean, I don't expect you to be good at marketing. That's my job. Um, so that's model one is collect them all centrally. Um, and you may still have, in that case, you may still have a registrar's listing that does that catalog listing for current students. That's just not going to be on the front door of the website. That's more three or four levels down for a current student. Um, the second model is totally decentralized. An example of this is Harvard University. So you go to Harvard site, you try to find a degree listing there. You're not going to be able to do it. The Harvard model forces you into a college or a school in order to get to uh, basically a, a, to find a specific degree. Um, the, the third thing would be a hybrid where maybe the undergraduate majors are collected in one place and the graduate listings are under the college or school. Uh, and I think that's a great model too because like I said, graduate students don't typically need to be able to jump from college to college. If they're nursing, they're interested in the College of Health Sciences and they're not interested in um, uh, um, COAS or something like that. All right, just so everyone knows, we are at the top of the hour, and we still have a few more questions left, so we're going to stick around for about 10 more minutes to get those questions that have already been submitted, answered. Um, but just a reminder, if you do have to jump off because our hour is up, please don't forget to fill out that very short exit survey when you log out. The feedback is valuable because it helps us determine future webinar topics, and it also gives Doug a sense of how we did and if today's session met your expectations. So thanks in advance for spending 30 seconds to, uh, to fill that out. But Doug, let's dive right back into a couple, con uh, a couple of these questions. Um, so along uh, basically the follow-up to the last question, um, do you think that all individual program pages, uh, particularly undergrad, should have the same look and feel? I think so. I mean, um, I'm going back to that stat on 70% uh, of um, students changing majors. Also, this is another one that, I, that I've that i heard and seen in the New York Times. About f up to 50% of incoming students are undeclared. That kind of varies by tier of the institution. Uh, Ivy League, they don't have many people coming in cold and saying I'm undecided. Um, mm. At Nationals, there tends to be a lot of students, if, if it's an option, who check undeclared. So if I'm undeclared or I'm uncertain, which basically we know because we know about up to 70% of students change majors at least once, um, we, we want them to browse multiple pages. So I don't want them to go to a biology page and see have a totally different experience than I get from an English page. We want them mm -hmm. to, to be able to go and say, 
uh, oranges to oranges, here's the kind of job I can get. Or, uh, apples to apples, here's the kind of grad school I'm going to be able to get into. Um, and, um, you know, same thing for opportunities outside of the classroom. If I were looking at an engineering program, I'd probably be interested. Can you hook me up with an internship? And if so, is it going to be uh, at a place like um, Apple? Or is it going to be at, um, you know, a, a military uh, engineering place? Might be interested in one, but not the other. Um, so yeah, I think it's. I, th I do think it's pretty important, at least on the undergraduate side, for the pages mm -hmm. to be consistent, to have a consistent UX and to have consistent um, content fields on them within reason. All right, thanks. Uh, next question. Um, one of our attendees, and I, and I bet this applies to a number of attendees, uh, mentions that they have several intro paragraphs on the main degree pages that link to sub-pages for more information. Is it bad to somewhat duplicate that content on the sub-page, um, or should that sub-page content be you know, completely different? Um, that's a great question. So the question is, is it okay to duplicate content if you have a set of, a set of pages as opposed to a one-page major listing? So this is a one-pager where there's uh, everything is kind of like all the information about the degree is on one page, but many institutions have maybe four or five pages to represent a single degree. Um, in general, you don't want to duplicate content, and the reason for that is um, Google will look at duplicates uh, of content and think that you're trying to game SEO unless you use canonical references. So if you are going to duplicate that intro copy that maybe explains what the degree is about, um, just because you like the way that that works. What I'd say is make sure that you set up a canonical reference on the top level degree page that says, um, basically what it does is it tells, um, it tells uh, search engine crawlers, um, the one page that's tagged with the canonical reference is the be all end all for us. And we're duplicating content on purpose. Only look at this page. Um, so I think that's, that's the thing is, um, I, in general, I don't like a ton of redundancy. I like a little bit of strategic redundancy, like that Spring Ar Arbor example. So mm -hmm. um, if you are going to duplicate it, I would say just be really intentional about it um, and make sure that you get the canonical reference attached to the top-level page associated with the degree. Cool. Do you have any feelings about student testimonials as far as being meaningful or valuable to visitors on these pages? Yeah, um, there's a number of institutions that do this, and um, what I would say is generally from analytics I've seen, it's not the topmost clicked content, um, but I think it is a good thing to try out. And a way to think about trying this out is um, you probably, you or admissions or a connected office likely does student profile content of some kind. Um, if you're generating student profile content for something else, it's really easy to just get a quick testimonial um, that could link to and be a little widget on a, a degree page as well. So I, I would say I've never seen it be the topmost clicked content on a degree page, but I think it's really valuable in terms of um, adding humanity to the page. And, um, and, you know, it makes the page a little bit more welcoming if you have a smiling student on it or um, if it's an art school, you can you can show the kids with purple hair that they're going to fit in uh, if they go there for animate computer animation, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I would say dip your uh, dip your feet in um, with care and try to marry your testimonials with other uh, marketing initiatives you have going on. Uh, Karen's wondering, or well, noting that major their majors page is pulling in a list from Banner. Do you think most institutions are are doing that? Um, she's noting that it probably hampers their design flexibility to be pulling in from Banner. Yeah, it, it does. And I think um, one thing that you could think about is um, having the Banner listing being a sub-page, right? So mm -hmm. um, this goes back to that idea of controlling the marketing content. Unless you're totally happy with what Banner is uh, piping in, um, you could make your own landing page and then have a link to the banner listing from that page. All right, our last two questions are uh, back to Google Analytics. Um, an another Karen is wondering uh, where in Google Analytics did you get or did you have to go in order to get to that navigation summary that you showed us? 
Yeah, it's 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 one of the top tabs right below the first graph. So um, it just says navigation summary, um, and I guess I could try to get to Google Analytics to show you. Um, let's try. If we've got time, let me try to show you. We do. We have a couple minutes. The uh, this will be our test to see uh, if the while recording uh, screen can <laughs> handle. Cool. Let's see. View and so I I this is the page that I showed. Actually, no, it's not. CLC accounting. I've got to get to the page first. So here's this was a, I showed a snippet of this page. You might remember this little uh, piece uh -huh. down here. Um, so here here we can see even from yesterday, this page now has one percent more uh, conversions to program options. This is what you're seeing right here. If you're not familiar with Google Analytics, is this is in-page analytics. It shows me my segments on top, my page views, my unique page views, my average time spent on page, my bounce rate, and my percent exit rate. Also shows me how many people are viewing the page right now. Um, this is a community college with over 18,000 students, so it's not unrealistic that 142 visitors are on the page right at this very moment. Um, and what I'll do here is I'll view in Google Analytics. So this is going to pull up that accounting page inside Google Analytics. And you can see I have a little kind of help widget up here um, that I can get to. My shortcuts, my dashboard, navigation summary is right there. I just click cool. it and uh, I scroll down. These are my referring pages. And again, you can see most of it comes from the degree landing page. And these are my next page pass. These are where people go from that accounting page. Most people go into the options to explore how, you know, delivery method, de delivery for the degree. Uh, and then many people going back to that degree and certificate page. Cool. I sometimes forget about that navigation summary in Google Analytics, so that's helpful to me too. Thanks, Doug. Um, no last question, also on Google Analytics. Uh, you heard, I'm sure you did, Doug, that Google just announced uh, their mobile friendliness. And do you have any ideas about what that might do to, um, you know, to the search or the SEO uh, for colleges and universities? Uh, since Google's saying that mobile is going to factor more into search. Um, you know, just wondering if you have any thoughts on how that's going to affect page ranking. Yeah, mobile, I think I have a page here um, that I can get to, mobile friendly SEO. Mobile, this might be it, let's see. Yep, um, I'm going to put this link up in the window um, in the, I'm going to put this up in the GoToMeeting webinar panel here. Oh, just perfect. give me one sec. Yeah, that's a great resource and it's straight from Google. Yep. Um, let me see. Type an answer. I don't, Mallory, I don't see that I can actually enter this in the... Um, you send it to me. I can chat it out to everybody. Actually, I found it. So two organizers and panelists. Okay, I'm sending it to you. Cool. Yeah. Um, and what this page is is basically... Um, Google, uh, a couple of years, uh, let me tell you what I know. A couple of years ago, um, Google Webmasters basically recommended responsive uh, as the default uh, method for delivery. Um, they recently published this piece, which is a mobile SEO page, which talks about um, two or three different configurations that work. And one of the reasons why I think they expanded this uh, to include dynamic serving HTMLs and separate URLs is that in the top 1,000 pages, uh, 1,000 sites, according to Alexa, I think only about 75% uh, of them are responsive, or only about 20, I'm sorry, only about 25% of them are responsive. So responsive is still regarded as uh, kind of the default method for delivery, but I think Google was looking at it and going, gosh, only about 25% of the top 1,000 sites are actually responsive. We want to make sure that people who have sites that are configured in other ways to deliver custom mobile uh, or to serve separate URLs altogether, um, we want to make sure that those um, th that we don't ding people for using methods other than responsive. So what this uh, resource does is it basically says, if you're using responsive web design, great. 
Um, here's, here's how you make sure your mobile SEO is protected. If you're using dynamic serving, which is common in, uh, in big e-commerce sites, that's okay too. If you have a totally separate mobile site, that's okay too. Just follow these guidelines. Awesome. Doug, thanks so much for sticking around for a few extra minutes to get through these questions. Thank you so much for your time. And um, everyone, I hope you have a great afternoon. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.